Welcome to Podcasting Smarter, the podcast for podcasters by podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. Hello, and welcome to Podcasting Smarter. This is Norma Jean Belenke, Podbean's Head of Events. And in today's episode, we'll be speaking with Chris Kremitzos, the creator and founder of PodFest. We'll hear all about this year's PodFest, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, January 26th through 29th in Orlando, Florida. We'll also get into what you can expect from attending PodFest, what the conference is, and how you can make the most of it. Stay tuned, and here we go. Hi, Chris. How's it going? Norma Jean, I'm glad to be here. We are so excited to have you here, and we're so excited for PodFest. Before we jump in, I'm going to say this a million times today. Podbean is in the expo hall at PodFest, and we are booth 34. We've got some free passes for everybody out there who's part of our Podbean family. Check out the expo hall. Come for free. Come join. Come say hi to the Podbean team. We are at booth 34, and the code is PodbeanExpo34. We'll also have it here in the show notes so you can plug it in, get your free ticket, and make sure to come say hi to the Podbean team at PodFest this year. And Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we get into this year's PodFest and what's exciting about it, tell us a little bit about what PodFest is and how you got started in the wonderful world of podcasting. So PodFest is an interesting creation because usually really big conferences like PodFest get created by an association or a group of people come together. We were created from a meetup of 13 people in 2013. And we had a gentleman by the name of Steve Cherubino teaching podcasting. I then asked him if he wouldn't mind sharing what he knows with some other friends of mine. So I literally would pick him up, drive him to a location, and there would be like 75 people sitting there. And he was like, what's this? I go, just tell them about podcasting. Don't worry about what they're here. They're here for, for you. You're the main attraction. And I helped like, this was in 2013. And there was a huge growth curve going on. A lot of listeners, not enough creators. And we helped quite a few people get started. And then they, my phone started ringing off the hook. Like, Chris, can you help me with this? Chris, can you help me with that? And I was like, guys, I'm not a one man, you know, shop here. So what I did was I asked everybody that we helped get started if they'd show up at a conference. And that became the first ever PodFest. Since then, PodFest has literally grown the first five years almost strictly word of mouth. So 100 people the first year, 190, 81 or something like that the second year to where in 2020, a week before the lockdowns, uh, we had just under 2,000 attendees. And it looks like uh, we're getting close to those numbers again. So we're really happy to be in the space. And we help independent content creators connect with great services like Podbean and education and with one another, which for those of you that are podcasters, collaboration with other podcasters is probably one of the most important things you can do to help grow your show. Absolutely. We talk about this all the time at Podbean, how collaboration is key and creating your community and network of other podcasters is really what's going to help you succeed as a podcaster. So super important. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Absolutely. So what was the process like of starting the conference? I mean, if you could go back and tell yourself some wisdom, right? (laughs) If you went back to the beginning, what would you tell yourself? You know, I don't know because conferences are so difficult and with COVID thrown in the mix and I didn't know what was I was in for, I probably couldn't tell myself because who would know that we'd go into what happened the last few years. But I would just tell myself, focus on your community and keep focusing on delivering value to podcasters. I would say all too often, every now and then I get distracted and I would just tell myself to focus more on the tasks at hand. Yeah, absolutely. That's really great wisdom. And for everybody who hasn't been to PodFest yet or who, you know, isn't familiar, tell us about what the conference is like. So the conference is a little different than your average creator con. So the first thing, obviously, it's dedicated to the love of podcasting creators in that space. But we have a couple of different things that have organically been created through the conference. So in year two of the conference, a lot of us didn't want to leave. And I remember we had one gentleman that was a former trucker, uh, boat captain, and really burly guy, deep voice. And I remember I I said to him, his name was Tyler. I said, Tyler, you don't look like you want to leave. He goes, I don't know how to say this. He goes, but this is the first time I feel like crying, like I'm leaving my family. And we were only together for two days. 
his reaction kind of hit home to me. So while I was there, I said, you know what, guys, it feels kind of odd to end this on a, a note with like a speaker. So I took two microphones, I put them up at the front of the stage. And I said, if anyone would like to say who or what they're grateful for, come on up to the mic and share. And Norma Jean, I'll tell you, no one came up. They looked at me for a second. And then I said the follow-up statement, which was, if you think you should come up, but it's a dumb idea, please come up for sure. And then everybody came up to each mic on, on both sides of the stage. And wow. PodFest every year closes out with the audience being the closing keynote. So that's our gratitude brunch on Sunday. The closing keynote is, is the audience itself of creators. And they get a minute on stage to share who they're grateful for or what company they're grateful for or who helped them. And that's a great way for us to hear like what happened throughout the conference and who helped who. It's a really cool thing. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is we host the largest influencer meet and greet in podcasting in the world. I had an actuary. Those are people at crunch numbers, figure out a mathematical equation where people sit at a round table. They answer the questions on the screen. So we've built this for introverts in mind. So there's no thinking involved, very little. As long as you know your name and the podcast you have or you're going to work on, you're good. And then we literally will connect in a 90 minute time frame. We'll make sure that a person that came by themselves makes 35 new friends on opening night. So it's a very unique thing. It's called the um, PodFest Influencer Meet and Greet. It's a secret sauce that we have that we've developed over the years. It's always a hit. We're actually doing more of it because people always say that's one of their favorite parts because they wind up making really great friends. And then, you know, companies like Podbean are in the expo hall. And the difference is Podbean and PodFest all are these grassroots tools that have become very big, but we all start very small and we still have that feel. So not only do you get it from the audience, but the exhibitors are very friendly. Like I, I can't even explain it. They're there to make friends and educate. So that's probably one of our best education besides our tracks our creator track and our expo track, just the booths themselves, literally, you could ask them whatever you want and they're going to educate you on things you had no idea existed. And sometimes they'll feature you, which I think is awesome too. And Podbean does that all the time. Yeah, absolutely. It really is a community. And so for everybody out there, it is in Florida. It's at the Renaissance Orlando at SeaWorld from Thursday, January 26th to Sunday, January 29th. And podcasting itself as a medium has evolved so much even in the past 5, 10, 15 years and has become you know an incredible industry where people all around the world are connecting and being able to do incredible things, right? Whether it's share their story, share their voice, create shows, monetize. There's so many amazing aspects of podcasting. But the community really has grown in such a short span of time. And we've all grown with it, which is really nice to hear as well. Absolutely. So also, John from our team is speaking. So if anybody is attending, John will be there January 27th. John is our Director of Customer Success here at Podbean. And he'll be leading a session on creating a successful passive income with your podcast in three steps. So that's really exciting. That'll be at 1.15 p.m. So make sure if you're going to head over and see John. And also we'll be in the expo hall. So like you're saying, Chris, it's something where community is everywhere around you. So you're going to go. Oh, and John's a great friends. speaker. Shout out yeah. to John. <laughs> uh, he's a really good speaker. So if you want to like make sure you invest your time wisely, his stuff's always sharp. Absolutely. John is fantastic. And it's something we're so excited that he's speaking and he'll also be at the booth. So if you have any questions for John or the rest of the Podbean team, you can go to John's session, which is incredible and really learn how to create passive income for your podcast, which is important. And I think a goal that so many podcasters have. And then if you have any questions or you want to speak directly to the Podbean team, just come and find us at that expo booth. Any question, big or small, there is no question we are not excited to talk to you about. So come find us at booth 34 in the expo hall. Um, and Chris, I want to ask you next, what do you love about the podcasting community? I love that they are so caring and they love to share with one another. And I have a feeling that has to do with podcasting revolving around voice um it, it's just a very giving community yeah absolutely and i, I mean podfest is such a community-based event it's something where you really feel community around you right it's it's industry but it's also creator and there's that heart there which i think is really important as well um and for anybody who hasn't attended an in-person podcasting conference yet we highly recommend going because you go and you instantly make friends. Everybody is warm and welcoming. There's not a competitive edge there. It's really communally based. It's, there's that feeling of collaboration in the air. It's really fantastic. Yeah, and with PodFest, um, 
Norma Jean, the main thing for us is we've kept that feeling even as we've grown. So it's interesting because some people will show up at our conference and they'll say, I thought it was like 100 people. And I, I would say, how did you get that impression? And they'll say the way someone described it of being such a warm, family friendly environment, I just didn't expect that to be something where there's thousands of people and you still feel that. And that's always a great compliment, you know, but then we also have to educate them like, no, it's a full function conference. People all over the world will show up and it's, it's yeah. just an amazing time for everybody. Absolutely. It's something where, you know, it may have that feeling of knowing everybody and being in a community, but podcasting is growing and that's what's so exciting about it. You still have that feeling at PodFest, but you know, the numbers are there as well, which is great, especially after COVID, you know, just that recovery bounce back. It feels like this is the year, which is super. Yeah, I would, I would hundred well. percent agree with you. Uh, I work out of a tech uh, accelerator too. And I could tell you right now, I could already see the beehive buzzing and activity that I didn't see um, the last couple of years. And I'm in Florida. So it just, that says a lot when you start seeing people uh, really active. I mean, like, like all the conference rooms are packed out, everything. Uh, so it's it's really a good, I think PodFest is going to be good luck for those people that attend. And we always say that they get what's called the PodFest bump. It's this unexplained bump from the collaborations you make. They actually show up in, in their downloads. So um, it's it's called the mysterious PodFest bump. And, and I think this year a lot of people will be seeing that. Oh, I love that. Another reason to attend. Um, well, I mean, obviously, we're so excited about John speaking about how to create passive income with your podcast. And he'll be talking about DAI, which is dynamic ad insertion and, you know, making sure your press kit's there and all your data's, you know, laid out in your press kit and all that, um, choosing a platform. Um, but what else are you looking forward to at PodFest this year? Any big highlights that you want to share? Yeah, you mentioned a couple of things that I think are really uh, important. One is, when I first started this event, I had to explain to people what the word podcasting meant. And you just mentioned a term that a lot of the podcast pros, and I think eventually many of the podcasters will know, uh, it's called DAI and programmatic. And all that means is ad dollars are coming into the podcast space. And for the first time ever, even someone with a couple hundred downloads might get a couple of dollars for the work that they've done. So it's an interesting time to be around. It's, you know, the audio space is lagging way behind the on-demand video space, but it's all happening. So for me, I'm just so excited about um, what it means for a creator to get compensated for their art. And I think um, this year I'm excited for a lot of the monetization tracks that we have. I'm excited for uh, like different hosts will we'll actually open up like, here's what's going on uh, uh, based on what we're seeing. So basically like Podbean, um, and the other hosts, they'll actually share like, here's where we're seeing growth. And what I like about that is host, hosts don't prognosticate. They actually have the data. So that information right. <laughs> is very important. You know what I mean? Right. The, the yeah, data absolutely. Like we did a survey of people like, no, 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 here's the numbers. And you don't have to guess, you don't, you don't need Edison. They have the numbers. So I always love those kind of presentations, me personally. And then there's a lot of presentations on how to add video to your podcast, streaming, uh, as well as how do you monetize, how do you grow, uh, you know, presentations about micro topics like TikTok or Instagram reels. Uh, I don't A lot of people, uh, we've been seeing now a lot of creators making money on Facebook, believe it or not. Um, there's a whole monetization side through Facebook that most people aren't aware of. So it's interesting to see. We have some of the largest uh, LinkedIn live streamers showing up. So it's, um, it's, it's a who's who. And the cool part is I actually this year I spent the last three months of this year, meeting one-on-one -on -one with just about every speaker um, individually to go over their presentations. And I I will tell you right now, it, it's like a, a, it's like one amazing ball player after another. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. I think it's something where, you know, just even from an event production standpoint, you know, making sure that each presentation is a home run. Um, each panel, each speaker, you know, and the knowledge is going to be unique and then fit within the greater program. That's so exciting. And monetization. Yes, we want creators to get paid. <laughs> we talk about this all the time with Podbean. Yes. <laughs> this is well, you really guys have what some great want. programs that a lot of people aren't aware of. And I think you got to go for anyone that's a Podbean user. My two tips as someone that watches the whole area, go to the Podbean uh, booth and ask. 
what are the new initiatives you have or what initiatives do you have that I don't know about? And I guarantee you, they'll probably show you something. They had no idea that because Podbean is one of the most robust, robust services. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how they could help you grow your show or tools that you didn't even know exist that you could implement right away. Absolutely. We have a lot of products here at Podbean. And for everybody out there, DAI, like you said, Chris, is dynamic ad insertion. And we'll have a link to an episode here of Podcasting Smarter that walks you through exactly what that is. So don't feel like there's anything technical that you need to know that you don't know about podcasting. We are always an open book and we want you to know all the all the insider terms and how everything works in terms of ads and monetization so that you can utilize it and take advantage for your podcast as well. Um, well, Chris, I kind of want to go a little bit down memory lane and ask what some of your memories, your favorite memories of the conference have been so far, because you guys have been running this conference for a while. So year one was just like a one day and it was really great. Um, year two was the one where the gratitude ceremony was born. That was one of my favorite things because it, it was so organic. And special. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very special. When we moved to Orlando, cause we were born in Tampa, the conference was born in Tampa. That was um, the famous story about how we got into the conference space in Orlando. So in Tampa, I had a lot of contacts. So I could get hotels for very cheap and keep the event, you know, profitable, not like really big profitable, but like where I didn't lose money. And for those that haven't done events, that's like a common theme with yeah. people. That do events. <laughs> it's very easy yeah. to lose money. Companies that sponsor events know this because they know how much it costs just to ship something from one end to another and then all kinds of stuff. Anyways, I didn't know. Imagine I didn't know anything about it. I just knew locally I had the contact. So I was getting great rates and I didn't know anyone in Orlando. And my one friend, Neil Gilarte, he said, we got to take this either to Orlando or Las Vegas. I said, why is that? He goes, it will internationalize the conference just by moving to that city. And I said, Neil, that's really great. But I don't have any contacts in either of those cities. And sometimes they're union labor where it just goes into the seven figures to do a conference because of the labor that's required. He said, my sister, my older sister, uh, no, younger sister has, is the service manager for this really beautiful resort called the Carrie Royale. He goes, can you go visit her? And she's going to show you around. Now, in my head, I'm like, I don't want to upset my friend. I'll just go listen and I'll just say no nicely. But I do have this thing where if someone has an opportunity you could, you should always take the meeting. You just don't have to say yes. Right. So I, sh I, I drive across uh, Florida to Orlando and I didn't meet with his sister. I met with the sales rep. So now I'm like, Oh my God, they're going to try and sell me. And the sister who's the service manager is not there. The sales rep, Norma Jean started negotiating with herself, which I've never seen before. And every time she would put a price out there, she would cross it out and go lower. So they basically gave us the hotel for free. It was like $3,500 in food and beverage, which is nothing. And all the ballrooms free. Wow. And I said, I gave him a verbal yes, send me the contract. And I, as I drove home, I called him and I said, Neil, what the heck was that? He goes, what happened? I go, the sales lady started negotiating with herself because I was so stunned by how low the price was. She just kept crossing the prices down. He said, my sister is the service manager for all the conferences there. And she's the head person. This is a very big conference center. He told that sales lady, if she didn't give you a deal, where you brought the conference over there, she would not service any of her sales events or any of her banquets. And just, um, <laughs> so basically, I said, then I said, Norm Jean, would anyone else would say, why would you do that? He goes, Chris, when I moved from Orlando to Tampa, you, cause I have a meet, I have a lot of like little meetups where I help people. He goes, you helped me in your, your meetup. You helped me get gigs. You referred me people to, so I could edit their podcasts, their videos. And he goes, you put food on my table. And he comes from a very proud Venezuelan family. He goes, that was my sister's way and my family of paying you back for helping feed my family. I was like, it's almost in tears. So that's wow. kind of how PodFest went from this little show to now the big leagues in Orlando, where we have people coming from all over the world. And I mean, this year we have Peter Ong from Malaysia flying in and he's one of our most trusted and amazing attendees. So we, we, we can't wait to meet him and give him a hug. So we're really excited. Absolutely. Oh, and that's such an incredible story. I mean, sometimes, you know, when things are meant to be in that way, right? <laughs> the universe just kind of aligns. And then, uh, you know, the, the goodwill that you have just, you know, in your community sometimes pays forward in a way that, you know, really helps create an entirely new community. So yeah. that's just such an incredible story. Um, and for everybody who's attending for the first time or who's coming back, maybe, 
um, after COVID or haven't, who hasn't been to a, an in-person event for a few years. Um, and, you know, PodFest is just such a community-based, amazing event. What are some tips and best practices you can offer for beginners and and people who are just, you know, getting back into the swing of in-person events who want to attend, find their podcasting community and make the most of the experience? Yeah, the first tip is get on the app. So a lot of people wait last minute to get on the apps for these events. We use the Whova app, which is the most interactive community-based app. So we're very fortunate in that we found a perfect fit for our community in a technology platform. Get on the app, start answering questions, start talking to people. We actually have ambassadors that are welcoming people. We're going to open the app very shortly here. Probably when this goes live, the app will be open. Um, <coughs> on that app, you can make friends before you ever show up. We have uh, Ask Me Anything calls with the team. So you could ask anyone on the PodFest team a question or get to know them. So we've been doing that all the way up to the event. And then when you show up and you want to hang out, go to the meetups. So we have yeah. in-person meetups after hours, the Influencer Strategic Alliance, uh, Influencer Meet and Greet. There's a lot of touch points for people to connect. So we chose this um, um, hotel, Norma Jean, for one very specific reason. And I know you've gone to events, so you know, you're know you going to know what I'm talking about. As a huge atrium outside the ballrooms, that atrium will serve as a connecting point for all the meetups that people want to create. We actually have a sign that'll be like PodFest networking over here. So um, if you can, even if you're not a night owl, try and force yourself to stay up a few hours after the conference and talk to people and meet people in the education sessions. We actually have a trivia night. Um, I didn't tell you this. This is another funny story. So Jonathan Oaks, who has Trivial Warfare, said to me, Chris, I want to bring trivia to PodFest because you do all these other great things. I want to, I want to, I want to pay it forward and do something unique. And I said, Jonathan, <clears throat> I don't even know what that's like. He goes, why don't you drive up to Jacksonville and I'll take you out at, uh, at a bar and we'll play trivia with me and another buddy. I said, okay. So I drive up to Jacksonville. I'm really tired. You know, like I left like work and now I'm driving up there. It's like seven o'clock when I get there and we're playing against three other teams. One team has like I'd like to say 35 people, which is like good luck beating them. You know, brain trust of 35. Another one has like 11 people. And then it's me, Jonathan, and his friend, three people. Okay. So, so, so you're already the underdog, right? I go, Jonathan, are we going to win? Cause you know, everything. Cause you do. He goes, no, actually <clears throat> when you have 50 people, it's almost impossible to beat them. Cause they have a brain trust of all those people. So all these questions are coming through. And Norma Jean, I don't know any of the answers. Like, I, I, I'm not good at memorizing lyrics, like certain things that my brain just doesn't function on. But then the, then it was really cool. They go, name uh, five or six rom-coms that Diane Lane has been in. And I'm actually, uh, that's all I watch is rom-coms in those Christmas movies because <laughs> it makes me feel good. And I answered yeah. them. And that was the la that was the thing we needed to win. We actually won because of that one, like, question put us in the lead. And now we do that at PodFest and people actually, if you don't have, if you don't know anyone, you sit at a round table, we make sure each table names, the, uh, they get a team name and then um, we just have a blast. People love it. Oh, that's so fun. Absolutely. And I think also it brings people together and, you know, also one of the great things about podcasting is that people's knowledge about just the most random subjects and their own niche is so unique, right? So putting them all together in a room and, and having that kind of experience is so much fun. That's really fantastic. It's tons of fun. It's amazing. I, I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, Chris, it's been such a pleasure. We ask everybody the same couple of questions here at Podcasting Smarter. So first is, where is the industry headed in your opinion? So uh, you know this because you're placed in these areas, but I get to see this. So the US is becoming a mature marketplace. So we're seeing maturity in the US meaning we're getting to the point where majority of people listen to podcasts in the US. Uh, some people still hold outs on radio, but you know, it, it, it's we're, we're a podcasting country. So I'm seeing um, parts of Europe really lighting up, but the areas that excite me the most, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, the Middle East region, North Africa. And then if you look at uh, Latin America, uh, it would be Mexico first, but then I would look at places like Brazil, so we're just seeing a lot of growth internationally. The English speaking markets tend to be the most mature from uh, Canada, US first, obviously, then Canada. Then you got UK, Australia, Australia, especially because most people don't know it's it's so big, but everybody lives on the coast. So podcasts yeah. uh, really took off over there. 
Uh, there's only 22 million people on that thing. So it, it's interesting to see where it matures. But you're going to see you're going to see Indonesia, uh, the Philippines, Malaysia. Thailand, those areas are going to light up. And so is the Middle East. Uh, the Middle Eastern North African region is really uh, lighting up. And then Latin America is right there with them. So I, I'm just seeing growth everywhere. Monetization, yeah. which I mentioned earlier, DAI is not a small term. I do expect anyone that's an active podcaster to know what that is, dynamic ad insertion. Right now, people don't. That's And you and I have to, I will always let people know it means dynamic ad insertion because they don't know what DAI means. But I think that term is going to be much more ubiquitous as we move forward because there's more money coming into the space. Absolutely. And like I said, we'll have the episode here linked in the show notes that goes into exactly what dynamic ad insertion is, how it works, how you can use it and how you can monetize because it's incredible technology. It's really, really cool. And you can monetize your entire back catalog of of past episodes with new ads, which is really, really fun. Um, and then Chris, what podcast do you like to listen to? Not to put you on the spot. but No, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you. I listen to clips more than podcasts now when they do the short clips. So I like Valuetainment, Patrick Bet David. He's a business guy, so I like his business uh, stuff that he talks about. Um, I listen to Joe Rogan when he has like really big scientists or archaeologists. I kind of like that kind of stuff. I'll watch the clips, and then um, oh, you know what I've done recently, and I, it's just full confession. I, I'm going onto audiobooks a lot because the problem with the podcasts—they're so good, they suck me in. And I wind up consuming a little too much content. So right now I'm in a, a cleansing. So I'm, I'm listening to, I just listened to David Goggin's new book. Um, and then Cam, gentleman by the name of Cam, I uh, forgot his last name, Haynes, listening to his. And they're more like ultra athletes. So I'm, I'm getting ready for PodFest, obviously. So I, I need the energy and I need that motivation. So that's, that's why it's very um, important for me. Then I could go back down my podcast rabbit hole. Absolutely. Absolutely. You need that ultra marathon endurance to get to the end of the finish line for PodFest, which is so exciting. Well, Chris Kremitzos, it has been such a pleasure for everybody out there who's thinking of attending PodFest. The code, once again, to get into the expo hall with that free pass is Podbean Expo 34. And Podbean's very own John Kiernan will be presenting how to create successful passive income with your podcast in three steps on Friday, January 27th at 1.15 p.m. in the creator wing. So super exciting. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Norma Jean, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us for this replay of our live event episode. If you have any questions about podcasting and want to get in touch with the Podbean team, reach out to us at podcastingsmarter at podbean.com. Happy podcasting.